Now, the Ghana Education Service says it will, from tomorrow, release a set of COVID-19 guidelines targeting parents. The service says this has become necessary for parents and pupils at home to familiarize themselves with what will be rolled out in all schools as academic work begins next week. This has also been triggered by concerns from parents on how the schools will ensure the safety of pupils, especially toddlers, who are also expected to resume school. We'll hear from the GES shortly. Some parents have already started the campaign at home. Judith Awachitando has been interacting with one of them and has more in this report. Meet 40-year-old Theresa Brown. She is a mother of four and is teaching her children how to wear face masks as schools prepare to reopen. Anytime you have to wear the nose masks, you sanitize your hand first. What did I say? Sanitize your hands first. Good. And then make sure that anytime you are holding a nose mask, you are holding this side of it. Huh? You don't hold here because you are coming to use this place to cover your nose. Do you understand? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. You check both sides. There's the part where it's very hard. It's a, a bit harder than the other side. That side will come up. So you look at me. Huh? Will come up. And then you wear it this way. As a mother, it has been difficult explaining to her children not to hug and shake hands with other children. With COVID-19 cases rising, she is worried about how her children will cope. The very little one, the one, he's, he's about seven years old. And sometimes you will see, he will pull his nose marks down. I put it back and I'm tired. I'm, I'm just tired. I, I, can't, I can't breathe. And... You can't do anything about it. You can't say you should remove it because he needs it to protect him. And it's, it's, it's been difficult. It's been, it's been difficult trying to get them to come to the realization that this is the life now. This is the norm now. And things has to be done the right way. Mrs. Brown is encouraging other parents to take nutrition seriously to boost the immune system of their children. We are looking at even for them building their immune system. Because when they go to school, they are not able to eat well. They will leave home very early in the morning, maybe take a little breakfast. And then when they, have, they are in school, they have to take their snack and they have to also take their lunch at school. For me, I prepare the food from the house. And so if the children are not able to eat it at school when it is cold, that will mean that they will go and come back and have not eaten lunch cold because they can't eat. Immune system cannot be built. She admits the uncertainty of adhering to safety protocols and argues that it is more dependent on parents than teachers to ensure the safety of their children. Surety? No. Uh, I would also not say I'm afraid because I am not the type who entertain fear. And so we would have to hope that things will go well and hope that parents will keep on, will not stop educating their children. The teachers can do just a little at school. So the, the burden is now on the parents to consistently do that. Learning to live with the virus appears challenging, but until many are vaccinated against the virus, the world would have to learn to deal with a new normal. Judith Awachitando for Joy News. Or something to do at home as well. The Deputy Director General of Management Services, Anthony Boating, says parents should not worry as adequate measures are in place to ensure their safety. A lot of things will change because we are to keep social distancing. Uh, we are to ensure that the children observe the protocols as have been put in place. We are to ensure that uh, teachers interact with the students much, much more closely and much more intensely because there are a lot that have, been, that have been missed and we need to cover up. So a lot of things will, will have, we are not going to have the, the things as usual. A lot of things will have to be changed. A lot of it, uh, much more concentration and effectiveness has to come into the system. There are guidelines. You see, madam, what, what is happening is that we will encourage everybody to be calm. We, like we did with the phase reopening, we, 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 we provided guidelines for the schools and for 
that these guidelines are sent to the school authorities. Now, in the current exercise, which the one we are doing, as I speak to you, today is a Tuesday. Yes, sir. Right. By tomorrow, by tomorrow, we will release the first set of guidelines that we are targeting parents so that they can liaise with their children whilst at home, help us educate them on some of the guidelines that they'll be going through in school so that the, the children will be much, much more familiar. Yeah. I'm sure you might have seen, we have just released, we have just sent out a release to our schools. And we've asked that the first eight weeks, the first eight weeks should be used to clear up those subjects, that, those topics that we have not been able to clear as a result of the closure. So we use the first eight weeks to do all that mopping up. And then we will then build upon in their new class. You see, that is, if you look at the structure, we have a structure which aims at returning the schools to the normal academic calendar. So next year, for example, we will structure it in such a way that next year, this year, the academic year will end around November, December, uh, around October, November. Next year, hopefully, if we are still alive, it will end around September, August, September. And we expect that by the third year, we will, will have returned to May, June. Okay. So that is how we are, we are managing it in such a way that we can return the academic year to its normal okay. state. He has also been responding to how they will deal with the congestion in some of the schools. We will observe social distancing where there are specific cases of schools where the populations are extreme, extraordinarily large. Mm -hmm. District directors would be, because we don't want to, it will not be general. It will depend on the specific school. And we will encourage that we will, uh, district directors, we have already met with them. They will be uh, directed on how to deal with specific cases of overpopulation. Okay, when you say how to deal with it, is there, are, are there examples that you talked about that you want to share? So, for instance, let's use this number of 60. Yes, you see, when, when there are 60 students in one class, it's too large. And in the environment in which we find ourselves. So, for example, what we have done is that we will try to see if there's nearby. One of the things, we have done some studies. And one of the things we have noted is the issue of school feeding. You go to a compound or you go to a community and there are two schools. One school is on social, is on school feeding, the other is not. You find the school with social with school feeding overpopulated, while the other one, it, because the, every children, it, many children drift towards those schools with the school feeding. What we are trying to do, and what we have, the discussion already been, is already underway. How do we spread the school feeding to the next school so that we can spread out the children to occupy those empty classes in the next school? For, and then, in some of the, for example, in the KGs and in the, in, in the very lower classes, if there are other structures around that can accommodate the children, we will deploy them. For example, I, there's, there are some schools which, which are housed in around church premises. Is it not possible for us to talk to the church authorities to allow some of the overflowing students to move in there and make sure that we are arranged in such a way that the student can receive teaching and learning mm -hmm. effectively. So that's the Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service uh, uh, speaking to Mamavi Uswabwaje there. Let's stay a while longer on schools, this time around on universities and compliance of COVID-19 protocols. Some students of the University of Ghana have expressed dissatisfaction with the measures put in place by the management of the school to prevent the spread of coronavirus following the school's reopening on Monday. Since the university's reopening, some students have failed to adhere to the preventive protocols protocols, going about without face coverings or ensuring social distancing. My colleague Kwekwa Sante was on campus earlier. Here is his report. University of Ghana reopened for this year's academic year on Monday, 11 January 2021. But with concerns about the lack of adherence to government's COVID-19 preventive protocols, the first day on the University of Ghana campus, with very little or no social distancing. Today, the story was a bit different. 
most students were seen in their face coverings going through their residential and academic registration. Some students of the university are dissatisfied with the measures put in place by the school to limit the spread of the virus. I wasn't really, I mean, I, this particular um, initiative. I mean, bringing students for in a room where you realize that we have accommodation said that this accommodation deficit would only be solved only if you build hostels. And I think it's one of the most important things that the to have put measures in place to deal with issues of COVID-19. The basic one is the wearing of nose masks. So you realize that across the four facilities we are in right now, many people are not wearing their nose masks, but they are able to enter into the various halls. Primary among the, uh, the, the COVID-19 protocols is the washing of hands before you enter any facility. You would expect that every other hall you get to, there are, uh, you know, Veronica buckets and so on for people to wash their hands. None of that is being done. You would expect that people's temperatures will be checked. None of that is being done. So I'm wondering whether the essence of the whole double track thing is to control COVID, which we are told is a very debilitating virus and can, you know, cause a widespread, you know, infestation and can even lead to the loss of lives of people. So really, the university has been, if you want, negligent in putting measures in place for the observance of COVID protocols? I, I would say that there, there is more room for improvement. Um, I wouldn't say that we have put in place totally watertight um, mechanisms to prevent the spread of COVID. Um, they are enforcing a no mask, no entry policy. There are tabs here that people are supposed to, I mean, wash their hands with the water that is flowing from before they enter. I think for now, these are the, the mechanisms that have been put in place. The registra mono registration process is being um, streamlined in such a way that a lot of people will not gather at a place as we used to in the past. I mean, there are still one or two people breaking the protocols as is expected, but it is not something that is as widespread as we used to see in the past. Meanwhile, Dean of Student Affairs at the University of Ghana, Professor Alufa Bobkin, says the university has put in place adequate measures to ensure adherence to COVID-19 preventive protocols and also to ensure that what happened on the first day of reopening does not happen again. It was a bit, um, I wouldn't say a surprise because the numbers that came yesterday was just too huge. And, and because it was the first mover advantage, it was difficult trying to tell them that you had selected a bed online, you were not going to lose it. So take your time, be in the line. Some also came with the appearance and all of that. So that was, that was a challenge. We observed that ourselves and, and we apologized for what happened. Um, uh, word had gone out to all the halls. In fact, yesterday on, on the hall, masters and, uh, and senior to test platform, we discussed this, that look, what we observed yesterday from our point of view wasn't even uh, the best for us and for our own safety and our staff and all of that. So, and, and I, I am happy to some extent today because I'd gone around again this morning and I'm happy to some extent what I'm observing that at least we are learning from the errors of yesterday. And, and we are not uh, at the, at the um, peak of it, more or less, in terms of uh, observing all the protocols, because I still see students walking around without the, the, the nose mask and all of that. But we have incorporated all of this in the orientation for all freshmen, and orientation essentially went out today. So my understanding is that people respond to incentives. So probably towards the end of today, tomorrow, thereabout, we'll begin to see that even apart from the halls, students as they commute around would equally put on the nose mark, observe the health protocols that we have, been, we have put in place. Yeah. There's a lot of work to be done in that area. Professor Bob King also defended the decision to fully populate the halls of residence on campus. We did so also in line with health advice that in the annexes where it's a bit spacious and airy, it's okay to put uh, four in a room, but in the main halls it's three in a room. 
two outer, one inner. This is also based on advice from the University of Ghana Emergency Response Team, which advises the university holistically on this pandemic. So we are just working in line with the uh, advice from health experts. Although the university will undertake a large part of its academic modules online, there are still concerns that with halls of residence and hostels populated fully, the risk of the spread of the virus may be high.